What is up, people? Welcome to episode number 16 of In The Car With Clint. It is today? What is today? Thursday, the 18th of March. 49 days alcohol-free for me, uh, which you can probably see in my face if you know me. Um, and you can probably hear in my energy if you know me in the morning. Pretty crazy. Um, I've done multiple uh, 50 and 60 day alcohol free periods. 60, 65 days is usually when I fall on my face. Um, so I've got to be careful soon. But it's April soon, so I can have some beers. Anyway, I am heading to Dry Creek this morning. Uh, my first meeting is at 7.30, which I will be a little bit late for, but the person I'm meeting is always a little bit late, so I think we should be all right. I am meeting Mr. Dion Carboni, who is my accountant, has been for a very long time, well, a long time for us, um, our business, probably half the business life. Uh, Dion is employed by Hood Sweeney, who is a large accounting firm in Adelaide, and we meet once a month to discuss all things WaterPro, all things business, all things finance, all things strategy, all things crypto, um, anything that's going on in and around my personal and business financial position um, and it makes it just keeps us on track so today on the way to work I would like to talk to you about finances and money and professional services and I guess planning for success so uh, Dion came to me uh, on the advice of a business coach Simon Starr who is a partner at Hood Sweeney. Simon Starr was uh, coaching me and the business for about two to three years, I think, in the middle of the business. Um, and Simon identified that I needed a good accountant that was going to be able to work uh, their career through to my, with my career, so in line with my career. So Dion's younger than me. Um, and the idea would be that we'd, we'd be able to build a long-term relationship and he'd understand the, the ins and outs of the business. So I started using uh, Dion as an accountant uh, pretty much straight away. Obviously, it's a bit of a challenge transitioning from one accountant to another. Um, for me, it was quite emotional. I, I don't didn't like firing my old accountant and kind of hiring a new accountant, but um, that's a separate conversation, having honest conversations. Uh, so we transitioned across to Hood Sweeney. There's a process involved in moving from one accountant to another because it's a professional service. Um, I can talk about that later. But we moved across and immediately uh, Dion and Hood Sweeney got me a $30,000 remission in penalties and fees back uh, from the ATO, which may not have happened from any other accounting firm and that was something that they had experience in because of the large... Uh, volume of staff, the number of staff they have in their business and the experiences that they're exposed to. So there's a lot to unpack here. I hope this doesn't take too long because I know that your attention is uh, a six minute time span from what I've been told, but it's an important one. So um, when you're choosing an accountant, firstly, it's important to interview your accountants and look at different options, right? The accountant that your mum had when you were growing up or the accountant that, you, that your um, uncle has that helps him with his business may not be the right accountant for you um, and may be at the end of their career and they're not looking um, into the new ways of doing things and they're not advancing and they're not thinking about um, you know, cloud-based accounting and they're not thinking about accounting from a strategy standpoint, they're just thinking about it from a tax standpoint. So that's point number one. Point number two, when you are looking at an accountant, for me, Working with a large firm <clears throat> makes sense. Now, the reason that working with a large firm makes sense is, one, the person that you're dealing with has access to a 100 other people that specialize in all different fields. Um, and in general, they're gonna be able to ask, once you have a good relationship, for an opinion from someone else inside the firm about uh, a home loan or um, your wills or IT in this case or a finance question. And you're not gonna get you know, punched in the face with another $400 an hour charge because you've built a relationship. So that's important. The other thing that was important about choosing a large firm is that you have access to the general knowledge of the firm. Now, um, it, you don't want to be the largest client in a firm unless you're a fucking multi-billionaire, but you don't want to be the largest client in the firm because you, you've obviously, if you're underneath 
the largest clients in the firms, you're letting those guys pay for your accountants and their businesses to run through brick walls and learn new strategies and test new tax laws and um, work with um, you know people that may even be on the board for the uh, for the tax office um, to understand the changes that are coming. Now, a, a, a one-person show who's doing taxation um, from their home or the, from a small office isn't necessarily and. There's, there may be some out there that contradict what I'm about to say, but in my experience, they're not necessarily going to be able to stay abreast of the taxation changes real time to make best advantage of your money. So that's the two things. Um, now, Dion and I meet once a month uh, because his role with my business is around strategy um, and not so much around processing of tax and bass and that kind of thing. So. Um, I'm on a subscription-based accounting model now, so I pay once a month uh, a fixed fee that gets direct debited. It's something that we kind of piloted, and it's been great for me because there's no large cash flow problem at the end of a period, and obviously their business has a recurring income coming in each month. It's the perfect business model for both of us, um, and I would encourage any of you, if you can, to try and negotiate that kind of a, th um, a model with your accountant if possible. You know, a business of our size is paying upwards of 20 to 25 or 30 thousand dollars of annual fees for accounting and advisory. Um, you know, that's a large sum of money for anyone to be ripping out of your bank account at last minute. So then we, we catch up once a month with a pretty loose schedule about what we're doing and we talk about what my plans are and talk about where I should be putting my money and we talk about upcoming uh, taxation bills that we're going to need to pay and we talk about everything human resources so I really want to just encourage you obviously we're getting it to the seven minute mark so I just want to encourage you to make sure that when you're looking at choosing an accountant um, you choose one with some thoughts in mind um, you need to make sure that you're thinking about like the end result and what you're looking for and if the accountant um, can't help you with getting to that end result, then it's probably time to start looking at a different accountant. If you're with an accountant um, and you're not completely comfortable, I, it's not silly to go out and interview new accountants and, and look at changing. I know it feels difficult, but um, you know what's gonna be harder, staying with an, a, a shit accountant that um, is doing the wrong, well, maybe not doing the wrong thing, but just not doing enough of the right things, or in the long term, it costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars for bad advice, bad structure, bad whatever. So. Uh, one question that I've put forward to people is, do you have a good accountant? If they answer, I think so, it's very unlikely that they do. You want to ask a question, is, and I do this, I meet a lot of business owners and we talk about shit, I'm like, do you have a good accountant? And when you get the answer like, oh shit, yeah, they're, they're insane, like they do this, they do that. You know when you have a good accountant and quite often it comes off the back of having two or three um, normal accountants. So um, <laughs> I'll close off now with one other thing. Try to make sure that you have one, two, or three different numbers that you're tracking daily. Uh, for us, we track daily sales um, and as a, as a total, so um, sales per business, and that's the main one that we track, and then I'm obviously looking at bank accounts and bank balances, money in, money out every day. But when you're working with your accountant, if in addition to that, you, can, you need to obviously take responsibility for your own finances. You cannot leave it in the hands of your accountant. Your accountant is there as an advisor. You still need to make your own decisions, and you still need to watch your own numbers. So if you can, get a couple of metrics that you can report easily, that it might be sales or turnover or gross profit or whatever is the most important uh, number to your business, very likely turnover. Um, and just report on that every day because what you are managing, what is it? This is really bad. Um, basically, if you watch it daily, you can manage it. And there is a good saying there. Whatever it is, put it in the comments if you can work out what I stuffed up. Sorry I took nine minutes, but it was really important. Um, it's probably a 30 minute conversation. If you want to talk more about accounting, hit me up with a DM on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, all of my contact details are at clint.com.au. Please like the video if it gave you any value whatsoever. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.